So Janine, we want to discuss what's happening in the Middle East. The contemporary issue is, is Gaza and Israel. It looks like it's... Uh, well, it actually, um, it started three months ago. It was the 7th of, uh, it was the 7th of October. Mm -hmm. And um, it looks like it's going to go on for a lot longer, um, unfortunately. Um, Israel's bombing of Gaza is, uh, is quite relentless and the place doesn't look anything like what it did before. Um, but what's happening there, apart from what you hear on the nightly news, is um, there's, there's a bigger picture at play here. Not just the bombs that went off today and the bullets that went flying across the neighbour's fence type of thing. Um, there, there's a bigger story that's going to emerge from this conflict. I think that's what you're trying to tell us. Mm. Yeah, and maybe this was planned. It wasn't just uh, something came to a head amongst, you know, nations that didn't get along that well. You know, putting the Palestinians next to the Israelis. I know when, when Israel was given its land back in 47, 48, after the war, um, New Zealand was one of the nations that voted against the idea. Mm. Yeah. Not, yeah. not everyone supported it. They said, look, these people haven't gotten along for centuries. And this is what we're seeing, mm. you know, mm. this is... But, um, look, we want to get your opinion on what, what, is, what is this um, conflict or conflagration all about? Is it, is, it, is it a case of us witnessing the emergence of World War Three? I mean, let's hope not, but yeah. it, uh, it's... Um, as I mentioned in a previous presentation, if it draws more and more countries in, it, it's going to be more than um, bombs landing on that small piece of land called Gaza. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, do you want to give us your opinion on on what is actually happening? What caused this conflict to begin, mm -hmm. and where is it leading to? If it's if it's plan, they want it to play out in a certain manner. Right, okay, so Robert, I know that you brought up earlier on the issue of the Iron Dome yes. that mysteriously failed to appear on the day when the Hamas launched their attack on Israel. Well, the point is they sent in 5,000 shells and, uh, you know, as, as I was mentioning to you privately off camera, you know, a plane can't fly acro across the sky without it showing up on someone's radar. Right. So then we had 5,000 shells and nobody noticed. Right. It did seem a bit odd. A bit odd, okay. I'm not saying I know exactly what happened. Yes. I'm just saying it seemed a bit odd. Exactly. Well, I've been tracking with um, lots of reports in the US, so there's a whole stack of people who are commenting on these things and researching. You've got whistleblowers coming out. So there has been... Um, Israeli Defence Force whistleblowers who have come out and said that we were ordered to stand down. So everybody was ordered to stand down who was manning the border and obviously those who were manning the Iron Dome on that date, which means that somebody in Israel at the very highest level has to answer for why they ordered everybody to stand down to allow that attack to happen. So the best explanation I've come across for what is going on is a combination of um, Albert Pike's written plan for World War III and the research that's been done at Stop World Control. They've got a documentary there and I'll do my best um, to sort of give you a bit of an idea of, of my current understanding. Um, it's not perfect, it certainly isn't perfect, and I, and I haven't spent all my time investigating it, so I'm not an expert. But um, the first thing I did was look up the World War Three plan, and I was staggered to discover that it seemed to uh, describe exactly what was playing out. So I don't know if you want to read that, Robert, seeing as I've read it, read it plenty of times before. And I'm sick of my own voice. Do you want to read um, the World War Three plan on the? Can you see that? From where I'm sitting with my eyesight, it's hard for it's me to see. Too hard. That's okay. Yes, it is. Yeah. All Sorry. right, you'll just have to put up with my voice then. Um, so this is what Albert Pike, the Freemason, wrote. Uh, he wrote the plans for World War One and World War Two, which I've got 
here. So you can pause that if you want. You can read the plan for World War One and World War Two, and what the goal was to be achieved. So World War Three must be fermented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agenter of the Illuminati. So think about this the agent of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. Okay, it's a lot to take in. Third World War must be fermented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agent of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. So in other words, there's an Illuminati agent in the political Zionist world and in the Islamic world. So the Jews and the Muslims. And these agents are going to create differences, and those differences are going to be are going to foment into World War Three. So that war must be conducted in such a way that Islam and political Zionism, the State of Israel, mutually destroy each other. This is the World War Three plan. What are we looking at over there? We're this watching. Story. We're watching. We're watching Hamas, who are in Gaza, destroying Israel. No, we're watching Israel obliterate the hell out of Gaza. And then mutually destroying each other. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on this issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual and economic exhaustion. Does that sound like anything like what we're seeing? Well, it, 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 it does. It does. I mean, I think one of the reasons Israel is hitting Hamas so hard in that Gaza region is, well, you know, I've always thought that sometimes Hamas can be their own worst enemy with some of the things they say. And they've said, well, we're going to attack Israel and we're going to just keep attacking and attacking. And I think Israel's gotten to the point where they're now saying, well, look, enough is enough. We're not going to allow them to keep coming back. Um, I, I know the Chinese have a saying, I've got to try and remember it, um, that you have to kill your enemy totally because if you don't, they'll, they'll come back again. It's like when you go camping and you put out a fire. Yeah. You've got to put out that campfire totally. Mm -hmm. You've got to extinguish that fire totally. Otherwise, it will flare up again. And that's a good metaphor, I think, for Israel's approach to Hamas. Now, some people are going to say, oh, but the IDF, the Israeli Defence Force and the Israeli government, they're, they're targeting civilians, women and children are dying, the hospitals are being bombed, there's, there's no medicine, there's no water, there's, there's no anaesthetic for people having operations done. I think that uh, Israel has sort of... Uh, now taken this uh, um, take no prisoners type of approach mm. where they're saying look if we stop Hamas is simply going to uh, gather their forces again and re-attack. I think that's what I think that explains Israel's approach even though the rest of the world are looking at it saying well this is a bit extreme right. but I think I think there's a rationale behind it. I also think that uh, the Israeli government want the people of Gaza to turn against Hamas. Right. Because they will say, well, Hamas attacked us on the 7th of October 2023. We retaliated naturally enough. And now look at the suffering that the people of Gaza are going through as a result of the actions of Hamas. Mm -hmm. And then the people of Gaza, the Palestinian people, will no longer support Hamas. Right. So I think it's it's not just a, a war-like thing. I think that there's there's a bit of political chess playing going on as well. Of course, yeah. If that if that makes sense. Of course it does, and I fully understand that's the um, that's the apparent scenario. What Stockwell Control have revealed, which is really astonishing, is that <clears throat> Israel themselves are on record as saying they created Hamas as their enemy. So they had an enemy who hides everywhere, 
who they can bomb. They haven't said this part, but they have said that Hamas is an enemy that they have created. If that is true, if that is true, it throws a very different light onto this. And what Stop World Control highlight is that uh, the State of Israel obviously was established by the Zionists. And who are the Zionists? Well, the Zionists are the Illuminati. So it was started by the Rothschilds. And these are the, these are the elite. And so the, the uh, you know, the Jewish name, the, new, the, uh, the location of Israel and Jerusalem as a safe place for the Jews, which is what they've always thought of it to be, is not really that case. It is not a safe zone for them. It has been set up to create World War Three, according to this. And um, he, uh, I think it's definitely worthwhile taking on board and exploring and investigating the information that Stop World Control um, reveals because he, uh, his research indicates that what is going on is the start of World War Three. Number one, Hamas is a fake enemy. The the enemy that they're going after are the citizens of both Israel and um, Gaza. So their intent is just to destroy all the people. It's that. It's about taking out the citizens. It's not about Hamas. Um, you know, it, it's the the narrative is fake, according to his research. Um, and if we continue reading the World War Three plan, so I know what I'm sharing is different to the perception that we're getting through the mainstream media, but taking into account what we've learned about the media, um, we can't be guaranteed to know the truth because there are agents at work. So he says, we will unleash the, unleash the nihilists and the atheists. We will provoke a formidable social cataclysm which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, the origin of savagery and the most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity whose deistic spirits will from that moment be without compass or direction anxious for an ideal but without knowing where to render its adoration will receive what so what's the goal is the end goal will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of lucifer brought finally out into public view so what has lucifer got to do with all of this this is clearly the plan to destroy all of the monotheistic religions and to un, un roll out Luciferianism. This manifestation will result from the general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. So what do you think of that? What do you make of that, Robert, with your background and understanding? Well, I, well, I don't know a lot about uh, the whole issue of, of, of uh, Luciferianism. Uh, I, I know that it's said that um, the Freemasons, uh, that that the light, the light of Lucifer, for want of a better term, is uh, what underpins their their doctrine. Yes. But uh, being a secret society, you have to delve into it first to find out what it's all about, and that's. Uh, that's obviously something that keeps people away away from it. I, I'm I'm not sure to answer your question. I, I'm not a hundred percent certain, but I do think that this is. Uh, I, I, I do think it's, it's it's leading to something bigger than, as I said, just a, a skirmish mm -hmm. in this small piece of land called Gaza. You've got the Chinese military, who are greatly expanding their military power. Mm -hmm. 
mean, why are they doing this in a time of peace that the Chinese military build-up that is going on at the moment is the largest military build-up in the history of the world during a time of peace? Wow. Now, you might expand your military and your fleet uh, at a time when there's a war on, but the Chinese are doing this when there is no conflict. So, uh, are people building up to something? And this is what I'm, I'm asking you, like, yeah. for your perspective on it. Mm. Again, Gaza is a small piece of land, relatively speaking, but looking at a bigger picture, there could be something on the way that there is far beyond a few bombed out buildings in Gaza. Um, well, what I've uh, come across is that um, most nations have got ships surrounding the area right now. Why are they there? Um, so I don't think it's just from what we read here about World War III plan. When I read that, what I see is not just a fight over a little tiny piece of turf over in the Middle East. Everywhere throughout the world, you've got Muslims and you've got Jews all over the world. This war will be fought if it is carried out the way they've got it planned. It will be fought in every nation. So he says there, we will provoke a formidable social cataclysm. So you can see how this, so when the war started, you had Muslims at the, you know, opera house all gathering, chanting, you know, death to Israel, whatever. Um, you had the Jews gathering, and then you've got everybody taking sides. Of course, everybody's going to take a side, and when they do that, they're going to divide everybody, to conquer everybody. When they take a side, what they do, they give them their resources. That's exactly what they want them to do. Give them their physical, moral, spiritual, and economic resources. So just like in the Ukraine, look at what's happened in the Ukraine. It's like a great sinkhole. Zelensky's like, send me some more money. Send me some more tanks. Help me, and we're drowning over here. And what do all the nations do? They're sending money. They're sending all their military, they're sending all their soldiers. Where are they going? They're going into a great sinkhole. So this is going to be another great sinkhole, as I see it. It's going to be a sinkhole that will sink all of the resources so that nobody has anything left to fight, so that they can roll out their final um, Luciferian religion. Well, that's certainly an interesting concept and it's something we're going to have to monitor. As I said, this, uh, this dispute, this uh, conflict could end up going on for um, quite a long time. It's been, uh, it's been three months already. Mm. And, um, you know, it, actually to the day, because uh, it, it commenced on the 7th of October right. uh, with the Iron Dome incident. Um, and... I know that even in the last few days in Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu has said, that with the, him, he being the, the, the Prime Minister of Israel, he, he has said this is going to go on for a while. Has he? Yeah, yes. Um, and again, Gaza is a small piece of land, comparatively speaking. West Bank, with, with other Palestinians, that's much larger. But uh, it shows no signs of letting up, and the Palestinians do have a lot of support from around the world. Right, there are yes. people who feel that, that the Israel, Israelis are, are justified in doing what, they, what they've what done after that 7th of October attack. But the Palestinians are, um, are getting a lot of support and sympathy as well. And by the Palestinians, I don't mean Hamas, I mean the civilians. Yeah, the civilians, this is, a, this is all about the civilians, exactly. Well, there's five million or so of them. All of them who are losing their homes, they're being turned into refugees. There's no, there's nothing. There's no, um, I was reading about the amount of trucks with resources that would need to be let in to support the amount of refugees that are there. And it was like about a 5% coverage mm -hmm. of the amount of resources that are getting through. So there's no food, there's no water. There's no medicine, there's, there's no, no anaesthetic. Medicine, mm -hmm. No anaesthetic. These people are going to suffer the worst kind of, you know, end of life. 
Well, I, I do think, again, I think it's a strategy on the part of Israel to make the Palestinians so very um, uh, disillusioned with Hamas. Right. Because the, the suffering Palestinian civilians will say, Hamas brought this upon us right. when they attacked on the 7th of October. I, I do think that may be a very big part of, of Israel's strategy. I mean, Hamas, they, they were, it must be said, regardless of what people may think of them, they were very popular amongst the uh, Palestinian people. Were they? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think that the, the Israelis have got to, well, what they want to do, I think what the Israelis want to do is, is turn public opinion amongst Palestinians against Hamas. Right. So that the people will simply say, well, none of this would have happened to us if it weren't for Hamas. I do, I do personally think that's part of Israel's overall military and political strategy. I've got no evidence for what I'm saying. It's just a suspicion as to how, mm. how politicking can be done. Yeah. To sway public opinion is, is a big part of it. Mm. And um, look, I, 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 I think it could go on. I think it could go on for quite some time. Um, not just in terms of Israel retaliating and bombing and looking for Hamas leaders, but um, again, when the situation expands out, more parties, more, more political parties from the neighbouring nations get involved. Hezbollah in the south of Lebanon supporting the Palestinians, uh, Syria supporting the Palestinians, perhaps Iran helping with uh, bombs and bullets and money. Mm -hmm. When that happens, yes, mm -hmm. it, uh, it, become, it becomes a bigger, um, a much bigger conflict. Mm -hmm. Now, I did want to say something, Janine, with all due respect, you're looking quite tired, so <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day and we're almost up at midnight, so <laughs> yes. it has been, it has been it has been a challenging time, and we even mentioned this the last round of interviews we did a week ago, or a week and a half, whenever it was. Mm. Um, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of setbacks, difficulties, delays, frustrations, uh, and you know it is it is it is a challenging time. Uh, 2023 was a roller coaster ride. Um, I'm hoping 2024 will be better in some regards, it will, but in, in other regards, I mean we're, we're still facing challenges, aren't we? Um, so, look, I'm, I'm happy to, to conclude here for now, if that's okay with you. That's fine, Robert, yeah. I am, I have just suddenly got very tired, I was looking for a drink, and it's not. I noticed that, <laughs> I noticed. But we've gotten a lot done today. We have, and that was a good discussion, I think. That's a really key current topic, and absolutely, I mean, if you want to add it in, yeah, I can't see this ending anytime soon. I think it will explode into something so much bigger. I think yeah. so as well. And with Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, saying this is going to go on for a while, I think he's indicating, whether it be propaganda or otherwise, mind games on his part, I think he's saying, Hamas, you're in for a rough ride. It isn't over yet. Right. And I think we're going to have to monitor the situation in an ongoing manner. I know you and I don't get to catch up as often as we'd like to because Australia is a very big place and everyone is widely scattered. But look, again, we'll, we'll, we'll follow up on the topic again sometime soon. I'm sure we will, yeah, with everything we've been talking about. We, uh, if we get to go to Israel, we're going to have a lot to report on. I would love to, I would love to do some reporting from Israel. Mm -hmm. Again, doing these things is challenging. There's obstacles to overcome all manner of things. I won't bore the listeners and viewers with what's behind the scenes, but there's a lot of planning and preparation. Mm. Um, you may be going into a country you've never been to before, you're not familiar with the place, you don't know anyone there, you don't speak the local language, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of issues to address. Many of the airlines that used to fly into Israel simply aren't going there anymore anyway. Mm. So uh, last time I checked, 30% of the airlines flying into Israel stopped. Mm -hmm. That's the commercial airliners, mm. um, commercial airlines. Um, and I believe since that time, it's well over 30% that have stopped. Mm. And certainly Israel was never the easiest place to get to anyway. Certainly no. never any direct flights from Australia. So there's all these things to take into consideration. Um, but no, like you said, mm. you know, it would be great to do some reporting from there. Mm. And there's a number of topics we want to cover in Israel. It's not just the Gaza conflict. Right, exactly. that, 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 
I mean, we um, we haven't divulged everything we may be working on at the moment, or things we want to work on going into the future. But uh, it, it's it's more than just that conflict, isn't it? It is. It is. Um, you know, Jerusalem is the home to incredible um, archaeological sites uh, and uh, historical sites, um, spiritual, spiritually significant locations. Um, so anyone who's gone to Israel um, knows these things. Um, so yes, we expect to have maybe some exciting things that we'll be reporting on Robert. Okay, and for all the listeners and viewers, thank you for tuning in and we will get back to you shortly with some more reports. Thanks.